Please. Um, hello, today we're in Ilkley for, uh, talking to my dad, Timothy Edwards, and my granddad, Raymond Edwards, about their lives. Okay, so we're here talking to uh, my dad, who's Ray, who was born in Kington on the Herefordshire border in 1925, moved up to the Midlands after the war. And what we're talk interested in hearing about today is all about the family from uh, Charles and Jane, uh, who were born in the 1840s and had a number of children, 11 children in total. Is that right? I, I believe that is correct. Okay. Uh, having said that as well, uh, it's the, uh, the main of the family, we can trace some roots and what have you, but two outstanding uh, members, which would be probably from memory, Elizabeth and Charles, they seem to more or less uh, not show up at all in records, but having said that as well, uh, Charles, I do believe, possibly left in the early 1900s and went up to uh, Birkenhead, come uh, Wall's End on either connection with the railway onto a ferry boat or something of that calibre. But um, other than that, all the other, um, all the other uh, members, they uh, throw up uh, quite an interesting background uh, as regards uh, Polly of the uh, old uh, book. Just before we go back, we'll come back to Polly in a moment. Can I just start by asking about Stocks Cottage? Because we're going to go through a couple of places where people live. That's now, right. Stocks Cottage, we don't think was in Kinnerton or Burling Job at oh, all, was no, it? No, without a doubt, Julie uh, has, has indicated that Stocks Cottage was in uh, Almley, which is a, uh, a village in Herefordshire, uh, before they moved on uh, or back to or up to Kinnerton or whatever. But that's Stocks Cottage. The, uh, okay, so we know that Emily, Mary, that's Polly, Elizabeth and Charles were born at Stocks Cottage. So they were actually born over the border in no, England. Much in England yeah. Whereas the rest of the family were Welsh, Welsh and born yeah. over on the Radnorshire side. So starting with the eldest, which was Emily, Emily born yes. in 1864. Right. So tell, tell me what you know and what, you, what you've heard and what you remember of the, the different family members. 1864, yes. Uh, Emily, uh, I, met, I only met her two or three times, uh, very kindly woman, and what have you. And uh, her uh, places of residence, which to my knowledge would be uh, a hamlet, uh, just over the Welsh border, at, at, uh, at Nil, with the husband, uh, where her husband but at that time, uh, he was working on the farm, uh, for a farmer by the name of Davis, which is un uninteresting. But later in life, the, uh, they eventually settled, presumably when he retired, uh, in a very nice little cottage in Prestine, once more, in Wales. Okay, uh, and Prestine was the county town of Rebenshire. Interrupting just for one moment, uh, one interesting point uh, as regards um, uh, Emily, her brother-in-law, uh, Charles, eventually became uh, a very much respected member uh, of uh, the British Parliament and actually served in a very minor capacity in Churchill's government during the Second World War. And that's it. Uh, he, was, he became Sir Charles, although I believe I only ever saw him just the once. Oh, so you did actually meet Sir Charles, because uh, you, you, you play down his, his significance. If you read him on the internet, he, uh, he was actually very instrumental, particularly in the cause of Welsh miners and valley oh, communities. Yes. In, in Betus and uh, in, in, in South Wales, and uh, was actually a very substantial figure. Oh, yes. And you actually met Sir Charles at some time. Presumably, I, I mean, I can't uh, honestly say yes, I remember shaking hands with him, but uh, I can re recall half a dozen uh, very, very much uh, upmarket dignitaries, of whom I would imagine, well, I know, that Sir Charles would, would have been one. Gosh, that's interesting stuff. Okay, so moving on, next in line was Polly. Uh, Polly, yes, Polly. Uh, in, in the days before census uh, and uh, information became uh, compulsory and what, uh, and, and what have you, but Polly and all, all, all the, the people of that era would be referred or connected with the village uh, in which they lived or what have you. And Polly indeed was known as, or known as uh, Polly of Old Radnor. Uh, Emily, she would be, she would be, her married name was once again Edwards, 
uh, and but she became uh, uh, Emily of Prestine, uh, connected with the village of the hamlet in which they lived. Okay. Um, you, were getting, you mentioned uh, while we were preparing for this uh, about Crossways Cottage. Ah, very interesting point. Inasmuch as uh, I would imagine sometime just in the late 30s, uh, going to Crossways Cottage and meeting a, uh, uh, a lady uh, who at that time had got, oh, at that time, uh, she had got either two or three daughters. Uh, by the name, and their married name was Williams, but I can throw no light on the connection, uh, and I never did know of a male uh, member of the family, but obviously the was a one, uh, so uh, that uh, throws up... Uh, and Ralph? Uh, Ralph, ah, very good. Now, Ralph was the only, uh, re the only uh, member of, of, of uh, really, of Polly's, uh, shall we say, Polly's line, if you like, uh, in as much as uh, he likewise lived in Old Radnor, without a shadow, shadow of a doubt, a half cottage and what have you, uh, and uh, probably later in uh, a rented property there. Uh, but uh, we used to see Ralph very often, but he is the only one that I can actually actively recall. Okay, and Jackie? <laughs> ah, I beg your pardon, well done. Jackie was uh, um, Ralph's son. A uh, happy-go-lucky little character would have made a good jockey, uh, <laughs> but um, very happy-go-lucky. But unfortunately, uh, uh, was very prone to uh, getting himself into minor scrape due to uh, uh, having a little lot to drink and whatever, particularly on a Sunday night. <laughs> okay, so uh, moving on, we can always come back to, to some of these. We've got. Uh, Elizabeth and Charles you've talked about uh, and then on the 1881 census we've got another four children um, living at the bank. Now what can you tell me about the bank? The bank. So moving on we can always come back to, to some of these. We've got uh, Elizabeth and Charles you've talked about uh, and then on the 1881 census we've got another four children um, living at the bank. Now, what can you tell me about the bank? The bank, uh, Kitten, as you all already know, uh, in the days we were speaking about, uh, it would probably be uh, a pretty much run-down cottage, uh, a farm, uh, farm uh, workers' cottage, but in uh, the era in which I recall it, it would be in the, uh, after the war, probably in the 50s and whatever, uh, it was bought up by a doctor, uh, from a field uh, to serve as a uh, holiday cottage uh, and the last I heard of it not so many years ago it had been put on the market in other words the doctor had dispensed with the interest and whatever and was sold again but I haven't seen it in recent time. Okay <clears throat> the, next, the next child was Arthur who was born in 1872 or thereabouts and certainly lived at Limer's Row for a while. Yeah. Do you have any recollections of Arthur? Very uh, well, not, not as a person, uh, but as a, uh, from, from hearsay, uh, a very much respected man, a very skillful man, a craftsman, uh, self-taught, uh, both in uh, wood and in stone, uh, and very, very well thought of. Um, and, oh, incidentally, worked on the big dams which supplied the, uh, in the Eden Valley, which uh, supplied water to Birmingham. The okay. main, main, main uh, water supply for Birmingham. And indeed, they were all installed just around the time of the First World War, weren't they? In the very oh, early no, part so. of the 20th century, around, I think, and around 1911, 1912, all the Eden Valley work. So that, that would tally there. And incidentally, a small <coughs> point as regards Arthur, he and other workers who uh, worked up in the, in the uh, Eden Valley at that time, no, no transport whatsoever, uh, they used to work, they used to walk, and started uh, having had a day off on the weekend. They would probably uh, walk over the hills, uh, starting out at 3 o'clock in the morning to do a day's work. That would be just on the Monday, and the same would occur. Presumably on the Saturday, in reverse. 
Okay, just while we're talking, before we go on to the other relatives, the other place that keeps cropping up is Lima's Row, particularly number seven, Lima's Row. Lima's Row, what's the significance of, of that in Dollier and, and Burning Job? This was a, uh, a, obviously a row of cottages which had been primarily uh, built, I would imagine, by the, the main uh, local employer, uh, the old Radnor Trading Company, uh, it was traded in, uh, in stone, uh, particularly limestone and whatever, quarries. And the uh, Limers Row had been built to accommodate these, uh, some of the workers and families. Uh, but unfortunately, due to the uh, atmospheric conditions, a great number of them uh, were quite seriously ill, uh, having inhaled limestone dust for so long that uh, it, it affected their breathing problem. Now I've got a lot of information on the, the, the railway and have recently collected quite a lot of pictures which I've looked at of, uh, of Dollier and, and the quarries and which shows wagons with tarpaulins coloured in uh, limestone dust uh, and all the rest of it. It seems incongruous because we often think about poor quality of life being in the cities such as York and Rantria and so on that life in the, in the country could also be qu quite harsh mm -hmm. and, 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 and difficult living circumstances. Is, is that how you, how you recall oh, things yes, were indeed. even in the 20s and 30s? Very much so. In fact, uh, one, uh, one had the feeling when you'd uh, go up through the works areas and whatnot uh, of uh, the, work, the works areas uh, of uh, untold dust and whatever. Okay. Pause at my 